unilateral biportal endoscopic lumbar interbody fusion for grade 2 spondylolisthesis, a minimally invasive solution to lumbar spine instability. Unilateral biportal endoscopic lumbar interbody fusion is a minimally invasive procedure developed as an alternative to traditional open and other minimally invasive fusion methods. It enables effective decompression and stabilization of the lumbar spine while reducing the risks associated with nerve root retraction. Research comparing UB T-LIF with traditional minimally invasive T-LIF has demonstrated that UB offers similar or improved clinical outcomes with the added benefits of reduced surgical trauma and faster recovery. This is a 73-year-old female with a medical history of hypertension, diabetes mellitus, and papillary thyroid carcinoma, status post-thyroidectomy. The patient reports intermittent claudication after 20 minutes of walking, causing low back pain that radiates to both lower limbs for the past three months. Both lumbar X-ray and MRI reveals grade 2 spondylolisthesis at L4 and L5. The surgery is performed under general anesthesia with the patient in the prone position. When using the C-arm fluoroscope for positioning, it is crucial to achieve a true AP view. This ensures that the incision and the intervertebral end plate are aligned, facilitating smoother cage insertion. The incision is aligned for percutaneous transpedicular screw insertion with a vertical approach. For this patient, the approach is from the left side. A 2.5 cm incision, including the disc space, is marked along the left lateral pedicle line to serve as the working portal. An additional 1 cm incision is made 2 to 3 cm above this, designed as the scope portal. Step 1. Use finger dissection to bluntly separate the muscle tissue over the facet. Step 2. Locate the facet and complete triangulation on it. Use the radiofrequency probe for dissection and tissue coagulation. Next, move to the spinolaminar junction and expose the interlaminar space. Start drilling from the superficial cortical bone using a high-speed shaver drill, moving from the caudal to the cranial end of the lamina. Once reaching the deeper cortical bone, switch to a smaller high-speed drill and grind along the junction of the ligamentum flavum and bone towards the cranial end. Next, locate the central gap of the ligamentum flavum. Identifying this anatomical structure allows us to confirm the midline. After confirming the midline, proceed with decompression on the contralateral side. Use a high-speed burr to perform sublaminar drilling above the ligamentum flavum. Use the radiofrequency probe to expose the upper edge of the lower-level lamina. Next, remove the superficial ligamentum flavum attached above the upper edge of the lamina. Dissect the ligamentum flavum along the junction of the lower lamina in the superior articular process, known as the J-line, where the ligament is thinnest and easiest to separate. This will free the lower right portion of the ligamentum flavum. Next, return to the central gap of the ligamentum flavum at the cranial end and free the upper right portion of the ligament from this point. After successfully mobilizing the ligamentum flavum on the contralateral side, we return to the left side at the facet joint. Use a high-speed burr to perform interfacet drilling, separating the joint surfaces of the inferior articular process and the superior articular process. Drill from the pars interarticularis, moving from the lateral to the medial side until it meets the previous made laminotomy. Break the pars from the medial side, then use an osteodome to fracture the pars. Then, the inferior articular process can be removed in one piece. Next, Locate the junction of the lower lamina and the left superior articular process, also known as the L-line, and dissect the ligamentum flavum at this point. This will free the lower left portion of the ligamentum flavum. Drill from the neck of the superior articular process, moving from the medial to the lateral side, until the entire superior articular process neck is completely cut. This will allow for the removal of the entire superior articular process. Next, locate the cambine triangle between the exiting root and the traversing root and gently mobilize both roots to create more space within the cambine triangle. Perform an annulotomy using the RF probe and kerosene punch, progressing from the outer to the inner annulus. Perform the disectomy using an end plate separator to carefully separate the cartilage end plate from the bony end plate in one piece. Take care to avoid damaging the bony end plate to minimize the risk of cage subsidence later on. Insert the trial with cage slide through the working protal.
After testing the trial and selecting the appropriate size, insert the cage along with the cage slide. Once inserted, recheck to ensure the cage is not impinging on or injuring the nerves on both the medial and lateral sides. Finally, remove the previously mobilized but retained ligamentum flavum, completing the laminotomy with bilateral decompression. Insert percutaneous transpedicular screws. Wound closure. 